So, last couple days have been really hard, and I'm still really upset. I tried making, well, I did make a video, but I just deleted it uh, after it happened, but Josh broke up with me, and it's really upsetting. I have been crying enough, like, the last couple days about it. I've been a fucking wreck about it, and it's hard when you struggle with mental illness and you really want somebody to see it and understand it, but it's either just too much for them or they just don't really fully understand that certain things that upset them are just parts of their mental your mental health issues and they can't separate it from you and that's pretty much what happened. I think there's also a lot of issues with just misunderstanding and miscommunication because I mean unfortunately a lot of our communication has been via text and like I mean, we'd see each other twice a week, and I would try to talk to him about stuff, but I also didn't want to, like, mess up when we were, like, having fun and stuff. I didn't want to bring up shit whenever we were, you know, having a good time and goofing around, and the last time we had a heavy conversation in person I just feel like that's where things went downhill unfortunately like I thought it was an important conversation to have and to know where we stand but it just kind of I guess made the reality of the situation more whatever to him this seemed like the biggest issue is the fact that I got feelings first and he says that that's been a problem with multiple people he's dated and he has some issue with that. He says it feels kind of cheap and he doesn't feel like, I don't know, like I don't understand personally and I don't even think, for me, it wasn't as fast as I've had in the past and I tried to explain that. But for him it was too fast because he feels like I barely got to know him even though like, I think we talked for like five or six days before we started dating and we were talking pretty consistently. Like he was trying to come over the first day he started talking to me, but you know, I wasn't ready for that. He kept trying to come over every day, pretty much, um, until we finally did first see each other our first date on January 3rd. And it's really hard to separate things like the most upsetting thing is like I knew me getting feelings was gonna be an issue but he listed other things that I thought would be problems or I thought would upset him and I had brought him up before and he had told me they were okay or he understood and then those were things that got listed as issues like a week and a half ago on a Thursday when we went to an improv class like I just I said I wanted to try it out but I forgot how bad my anxiety was with that stuff and like I had a panic attack and I had to leave like we had to leave because he was the one who drove us and I felt bad because he was having a lot of fun and he seemed like he was in his element and I felt so bad because I couldn't stop myself from freaking out and then when I was just asked him like I got really upset because at first it seemed like the main reason or the only reason that he was breaking up was because I caught feelings first and I th felt like that was really unfair like I thought I was being punished because I fell in love with someone and that seems like the worst fucking thing in the world but he kind of, he elaborated, and one of the things I already knew, like, he was getting stressed out because he, because I had lacked 
a support system. And this is something we talked about and something I was trying to work on. And I, honestly, the last week before the breakup and stuff, like, I started going to a support group and I wasn't really bringing him into shit outside of just saying basic stuff. But I think at that point it was just kind of too late, unfortunately. And I didn't want it to be. I was trying to prove that I wasn't trying to put it all on him. And I, there's a lot of stuff with like borderline personality disorder and wanting, like, especially when you fall in love with someone, like wanting all the attention you can get from that person. And I really try to find the balance there like, I've done a lot of counseling and stuff, but when I start to spin out and I get really depressed, like, I get so desperate and anxious and fearful. And, like, so I do come off intensely and I try not to. And I always apologize to him. Like, I wasn't trying to, like, put it on him. And I was trying to reach out to other people. And it was it's just been a bad time as far as, like, friendships for me and support system and uh, just relationships in general have been... You know, people naturally will cycle in and out of your life because people's life situations change, and I understand that. You know, people who I would have considered my support system, you know, four or five years ago, they're, they got other shit going on, they live farther away, you know, they're married now, they, or they have kids now, or et cetera, et cetera, anything that would put more on your plate where you don't have as much time to be able to emotionally put yourself out there for other people so I get that but it's just a really shitty time because I feel like I've always had a hard time making really close friends because of my illness and like our illnesses because I have generalized anxiety disorder and really bad depression too and then the borderline personality disorder so it's a shit show uh, and like I have my counselor I've been seeing her every week sometimes I saw her twice a week but honestly like I can't afford to do that um, so I started going to the support group last week uh, and the support group meets three times a week but last week I went Monday and Thursday this week I'm gonna go all three days because it's Monday Wednesday and Thursday um, it just meets at a different place on Wednesday, but it's a free support group. Uh, I lose my train of thought. Um, it's hard for me just even kind of like being in a new group of people and like trying to find people that I feel like understand me and understand what I'm going through and... I mean, I know people understand breakups and stuff, but there's something different, too, for me. Like, I didn't want to fuck this up, but the other piece of it is him. He got angry at me because I was trying to, I mean, I got really upset and I was really suicidal about the whole situation. Like, I'm not going to lie about that, but I wasn't. I just wanted to talk through things for my own sanity and like I get really desperate in those situations where I just like need to say certain things and like need things to be okay and I just want somebody to understand me and I will like ramble all day like trying to like what is the best way I can say this well here's everything that's gone through my fucking head and these are everything I've been feeling and like you know I'm not trying to like I kept saying I'm not trying to upset him but he was misreading things or like making what I was saying into something much worse than what it was and it was really upsetting and frustrating it was making the situation worse the last couple of days because I try to talk to him and I'm like can you please just answer questions and he was getting mad that I kept asking the same questions and it was like well if you would just answer like he said I was being dismissive well please tell me where I was being dismissive because I keep reading these conversations over and over and over because my anxiety 
So I'm like, okay, well, I'm trying to Sherlock Holmes this shit and figure out what the fuck did I do? Where was I dismissive? But I think it's just a misreading at some point. Like, unless he's talking about an in-person conversation or a phone conversation or something from before. But he's saying I'm being dismissive whenever I'm just trying to tell him, like, this is my experience. This is what I'm feeling. And, like, this is what I feel like I need right now while I'm spinning out. And, like, can you... I never wanted it to be like that. And he got so mad yesterday. He got kind of nasty to me. And I'm really upset. And I, I, you know, I apologize to him if I... For how are he because he said he felt like I was trying to make him feel like shit and I was like well the only thing that I feel like you should feel like shit for like honestly like you don't break up with someone over a text message especially when he was here Saturday night for four and a half hours he could have sat down we could have had the conversations you know anytime I've broken up with someone it's been in person and I feel like that's a respectful thing to do <sighs> Unless, I mean, the only situation I would say to not break up with someone in person is if you felt like your life or safety is in danger. Like, if that situation, I understand, but his safety was not in danger or anything. He just, he didn't want to be around me spinning out, and I know that's what it is. Because he knew I would break down and cry and spin out a little bit, but... I've cried when I broke up with other people too, so like it doesn't matter. Like it's upsetting, but emotional closure there is better. Like he says, well, he's, he was saying he wouldn't be friends and he was getting so pissed off yesterday and he was telling me, he said he was going to block my number and then I, I was apologizing and I said, you know, I just feel like there's a lot of miscommunication. Like, I'm sorry, like I would like to have this conversation at some point and he said he just needed to cool down and that we could try to be friends still I don't it's hard it's really hard like I don't like having messy breakups with people but I also want to have some kind of common ground and understanding there's people I don't talk to anymore because like they just got so mad at me when we broke up because they either <sighs> there was just a lack of understanding with one of them for sure because he he didn't understand why I would be mad that he he came to pick his mail up and this is an ex from years ago but he came to pick his mail up from here and like we had a pretty I mean it was okay like he was still a little miffed with me. I was still upset about the situation because he broke up with me. Wouldn't tell me really why he broke up with me. Like, I tried to, like, get him to actually elaborate why. And he just came up with, like, You're, there's too much stuff in the apartment. Like, really? Really? And honestly, I think he really wanted to date this other friend of mine. And that was the reason why. Because he started dating her after a few weeks. He's married to her now, so whoop de fucking do I guess. But, I mean, he, he hadn't talked to me since that whole situation where he came up to get his mail and he brought her up here. Whenever I was like, I just thought it was going to be him picking the mail up and he brought her up here and I was still pissed off at her because of the shit she said to me. Because she thought I should just be okay with the fact that she started dating him. And I did all this stuff for this girl. And I felt like it was a little backstabby. Like, at least wait a few months if you really want to date someone who's, a, like, one of your best friend's exes. Like, once I get through that hump, go for it. I don't fucking care. Like, I've had people date my exes that were best friends of mine. But it was after the whole emotional thing. She was basically going around and telling people I needed to get over it whenever I got completely blindsided by that situation. So, yeah, that was, that was like 20, 2013, that whole situation. Um, I saw her a couple years ago when she was pregnant with his kid. They hadn't gotten married yet and they were just moving in with each other. And she goes, yeah, we're gonna, he's about to move in with me. And I was like, you're seven months pregnant? and you guys haven't lived together yet 
that sounds um, great. I think, honestly, before you have a kid or get married to someone, you should live with them for a year. Because you need to know how fucking disgusting someone is or how fucking annoying they are. You need to know that you can live with this person and they're not going to be in your fucking personal space. That they will let you live as an individual and as a unit. Like, when I live with people, like, I, I'm pretty clear, like, when I'm doing something like, hey, I'm doing this, like, you know, don't talk to me for a little bit. Or, like, I mean, you can talk to me, but, like, there was one person I had to keep telling, please don't talk to me when I do this, because he would sit there and he would whine and whine. That didn't last very long. I literally regret letting that guy move in with me, because... It didn't, it only lasted two months after that because he was getting really manipulative and anytime I wanted any time to myself or if I was trying to watch something that he wasn't interested in, it was like, <gasps> he would just keep doing that. And I was like, whatever, dude. Like, seriously, people need just time to do stuff. And like, I'm a super clingy person and I still like to have my personal time to run errands or whatever. Like, I like running errands with my partner, but like, after you're with someone for a long time, like, it's not as important, I guess, to like, always have to do everything with them. Like, in the beginning, I'm totally the person like, I want to do everything with you because I want to see, like, how we interact in these things. Like, how do you run errands? Do you get stressed out when you go to the grocery store? Do you get stressed out? driving uh how well do you drive do i have to drive everywhere i dated a lot of people who couldn't drive which is another thing i can't do anymore um you know i just like to see how they interact with things like i know i have anxiety like i get bad social anxiety and sometimes it's better than others um oh i guess wow wow i think i went really far into that hole there and got really distracted when I was going back and saying the list of reasons why Josh <laughs> broke up with me and the whole improv situation okay he used that situation to say that he felt like he couldn't trust that I we could go out anywhere and I would be able to handle it really that one situation we went to multiple things like, I know we only dated two months, but we went to multiple things. And, like, I took him out places. Like, I took him out to the Asian market. I took him out to a kink event. Like, we did multiple things. We took some, we took a walk around my apartment complex, too, last week. Like, I mean, some things are a little more mundane than others. But, like, we went out places. We went out to restaurants. I never had any other problems. It was just that improv class. And I've done plenty of things on my own, too. I've gone <laughs> out of state. I've drove far places. Now, I've had panic attacks. And these are things I struggle with. But, like, this shit was on my okay Cupid, dude. Like, some of these things are getting used against me. And my mental... Just, like, mental health stuff that I was never lied about. I was completely honest about stuff I struggle with. Like... I don't see a reason not to be honest because I this is not what I wanted. I didn't want my mental health issues to be the reason why things couldn't work out. <laughs> but <laughs> seems like this weird unavoidable plague and then why lie to me and tell me something's okay when it's not? Or maybe it was okay for a moment and then just everything festering in your head it became not okay. But honestly, in the end, I think the main main issues were really the me falling in love first. I honestly think that's the big one. The, I mean, cause he kept bringing it up and um, just the way that Thursday went after the whole improv thing and we had a conversation. Cause I knew I wasn't trying to say like, I love you all the time. I think I only said it like a couple times, like, I didn't even start saying it till after Valentine's Day, and even then I think I said it maybe like four times. And I just, I had asked him that night, like, does me saying I love you make you feel awkward? He said, yeah, kinda. And I said, 
I said, yeah, I thought so, and I don't want to make you uncomfortable. And he's like, well, I don't want you to hide your feelings. And I said, well, I'm not trying to say it all the time. Like, I'm not trying to be how I usually am if I can get in the habit of saying I love you with someone. So I was trying to be very respectful, but that whole Thursday night just went down in the shitter from there, just anxiety and depression and he was getting weird and I don't know, we had conversations, but I don't feel like they were productive. I feel like, unfortunately, I think he sat and he festered with those for the last week and a half before he decided to break up with me this Sunday. So we got from January 3rd to March 3rd, dating exactly two months. Great. I, I the most disappointing thing to me is, like, I have such a hard time finding a connection with someone, like, really. And with each relationship I get out of, I feel like I become more picky because I'm trying to avoid the issues of my past relationships. So, I put a nix on a lot of things, things that I know I can't tolerate anymore or deal with anymore, like my uh, last like long-term relationship, my ex Eddie, he, he smoked weed a lot. And I've dealt with that in past relationships, but like in the beginning it didn't seem like a lot to me. But just when he got to that point where he ran out and he got angry, I was like, I don't want to be around this anymore. Like, this is not the kind of person I want to be around. I don't care if you smoke occasionally, because I smoke occasionally, like a couple times a month. Like, social smoking? Fine. Dandy. Don't care. I mean, I don't care if you do it like a couple times a week, like... But the person who needs to smoke every day, to me, that just doesn't work for me. So that's now another thing just that's been on my list. Um, I just, I have so many things on my list. Like, I need this, like, very strong, like, mental connection with someone. Like, and I felt that with Josh. Like, we had this very good sort of banter. And, like, we go back and forth and bounce ideas off each other. And... He was smart and creative and like that it just feels sort of rare in guys to like find a guy who can be sort of scientific and logical but also like could get in the weeds on some weird metaphysical shit like some ghost or some fucking I don't know. We try to like look at things like how would you look at this from a scientific perspective but then also like have the science mind, but also be very creative and RC and like, I'm that person in a lot of ways. Maybe my understanding of science wasn't as good as his because he was actually going to school for it. But, uh, I have an appreciation for science and like being able to explain things. Um, for me, I'm definitely more in the psychology and, uh, like neurobiology, like where those things meet. That's more my understanding of things and where I would consider my expertise you know something I could have a degree in if my mental health didn't send me to the hospital when I tried to go to school and do work full-time it's not a not a possibility for me at all I here's my choices I pay my bills or I go to school we don't get both we get, we try both, we end up in the hospital, uh, ODing on pills or some bullshit, I don't know, whatever I was doing, whatever I was trying to kill myself with. I have no, I have a lot of issues with needing a lot of in-between time and school and work full-time does not allow for that. It's too much stress, it's too much pressure. It's too much time eaten up by things you have to do. And in my head, when there's too many things I have to do and not enough time to breathe and, like, center myself, then I lose my fucking shit. And I can only do, do that stuff for a very short period of time before I lose my shit. And it's just upsetting because... 
even my counselor says <laughs> that she wished there's there was a way for me to be able to get some kind of certification in mental health or someone to like test me or like go through and see that I actually do understand this stuff very well like she said that my understanding and my knowledge that there's people <laughs> and this leads to a joke too but she's like there's people that have been practicing for 15 years who don't even understand what you understand and I kind of smirked and I said well I've been practicing for 15 years because technically 16 if I really want to get into like being technically right that I started doing all this research and delving very deeply into the subject of psychology and the brain and like how trauma like physically affects the brain and the chemical structures and all this like I have this like have you seen the movie The Beautiful Mind like how that guy is with math with all the little strings on the wall uh, that's how I feel like whenever I'm figuring things out and like making the connections between behavioral stuff and trauma and just general mental health stuff like my brain is just putting those little strings together and it's a very particular feeling I get when I have that level of understanding it's like a connectedness to knowledge in the world that sounds very um I don't know does that sound like something weird kinda but it's also hard having that understanding because then in a group of people because some of it's very mm, intuitive like um, for anyone who's actually in the mental health field you would know after a while you can see patterns in people and you can notice things very quickly and this was something like also why my counselor was saying like people who practice for 15 years sometimes don't have that intuit sense or don't learn it or that empathy to be able to like connect with people and be able to feel out what's going on with them and I a lot of times it's like that with some people like some people I can hear their voice and I'll be like I'll be like oh sexual abuse or oh this or oh that like I it's very hard to explain unless you like know it but I th I I would give a lot of credit to Dr. Drew Pinsky because I mean a lot of stuff I learned from listening to him on Loveline and it just absorbed in my brain I mean I read a lot of books and I've had a lot of life experience with people and I've helped a lot of people myself and then just my own my own experience with my own mental illness and like I've been told by multiple mental health professionals that I am the most self-aware person with borderline personality disorder which is very fucking hard because people can take self-awareness and be like well then then you should know well enough to not do the things you do and it's like well being self-aware of a pattern or something only really helps me be able to try to focus with my counselor or something to try to work through something it doesn't really stop it happening when you're spinning out in the moment <sighs> and it's really hard to explain to people and I always want people to take me seriously and I don't feel like people take me seriously like I don't know it's it's frustrating it's really frustrating I never like because that, that I feel like that's the other aspect that my self-awareness is another piece of why people think that pieces of the borderline are just shitty parts of my personality like because that's what Josh was kind of saying when he was being a dick yesterday that no this isn't your mental illness this is about you and maybe you need to look at that and it's like no dude everything you listed is problems outside of the fact that you said you were allergic to my cats because I don't know where the fuck that came from he never addressed it I'm, I said multiple times then what the fuck what the fuck about the cats like he never answered me about that like why didn't you tell me you were allergic to cats and then why were you shoving your face into my cats if you're so allergic like uh, some things just felt like a reach like such a reach like that's a fucking reach and a half you're obviously not that allergic because he never was sneezing or anything 
like maybe a little sniffly but i have allergies i have dust and mold allergies so my life is always a sniffle but uh the other one what was the other fucking thing he brought up that oh he didn't elaborate on another one but like mostly it's just more about me not wanting to get in fights with people i mean honestly like I think he, he was saying something like I try to shove the problem off on the other person, but he never, I tried to get him to explain that when he said it, he never elaborated what he meant. So I, I'm not exactly sure, but I, I mean, I've always said that I don't like conflict and I don't like fighting and it will cause me to shut down or cry or I, I get really anxious in those situations. I will dissociate sometimes. So like... <laughs> part of the borderline dissociation and shutting down like triggers like well that's also kind of part of PTSD too because growing up in a um, household with a very angry father uh, that is a big trigger of mine and I told him that like any kind of fighting or like even people like slightly raising their voice at me can make me shut down I mean in he had told me like he was kind of similar because his household was rather chaotic but uh i don't know i can't really say too much about that one since he didn't really super clarify it but it just seems like what i mean the biggest thing really is this more me needing a support group and not putting so much on him that I honestly think between that and just my me falling in love first are really like the main problems and I know I keep reiterating stuff sometimes I have a really hard time tracking and I've definitely rambled but since he was in since we did do three videos together I feel like I have to say something about the situation and I don't know he may appear in the future just more generally depending on uh how friendship part goes who fucking knows honestly i mean we're still trying to figure out i mean he got got his ticket for interviews and i'm kind of feeling mixed on that now like there's part of me that would like him to go but then part of me that like right now because I'm so still emotionally hurt and all that like the idea of like being around him but not like being romantic or anything seems very sad to me and I miss it a lot and you know it's hard when you have some something with someone that you think is special and you feel a very strong connection to them and that connection gets severed because <laughs> I really felt like that connection was something I didn't really have with anyone else like there were some similarities between him and my last ex Eddie uh, my last long-term relationship um, but like there was pieces about Josh that I really wanted that I never got in that other relationship and that's the part that hurts me the most because like I was so excited about it I was so excited like oh we're actually gonna like do things and like try to learn things together and like we're making plans and we're like making art together like I mean we kind of like more basically basic stuff because we just started doing little things here and there like we were gonna like I was gonna show him how to sew stuff and all that and then now it's just like oh well what was the point in making all these plans if if you just were gonna leave like that's so sad like I thought because he was so excited about things and making plans with me and all that that he wanted to stay around and try to like build something and like I don't know that he understood to some extent even if he didn't fully understand but yes he understood a lot less than I thought he did and that's 
it's also very sad. I don't, there's a lot of pieces of this that are sad to me, and there's a lot of pieces of this that are highly fucking frustrating. And the frustration can cause as much pain as losing someone romantically that you fell in love with. Because you try to sit there and think like, could I save this? If I wasn't so fucked up, I don't think that it would have broken off like this. I mean, maybe down the line, I mean, it would have list lasted longer than it did. I can't say so much for the future, you know, because I think maybe generally he has anxiety with relationships. Like that's something I picked up on him in general. Like I think the idea for him of being too physically close or too much, I don't know. I'm not trying to like, cause I already told him what I thought about that. And I'm not trying to like sit here and give my whole analysis of, I think he has some fear of close intimacy and that sort of stuff. But, I mean, he wouldn't be the only one. I've been there. I've dealt with that. I've seen it. I know what it looks like. I was hoping, because it's just weird when someone can be so physically present, but has some emotional mm, walls. I won't say distant, because I've dated, been with enough people who are emotionally distant, that's a different feeling, but when someone is very protective of themselves and has some walls up, I I can feel that too, and that's definitely more what I would get with him, that he was very, seemed very protective of his, his heart, I guess, in that matter. I don't know. I mean, I can talk all day. It's not like he'd say that I was right in that matter because I don't even know if he fully knows himself because a lot of times people do things subconsciously. People aren't self-aware. People take a long time to notice their own patterns. Some people are better than others. I don't know why the fuck I'm so self-aware. I fucking call my bullshit out way too much. I've been calling my bullshit out since I was fucking 12. So, I couldn't tell you what makes a person self-aware, and sometimes self-awareness can be the most... <sighs> it's good and bad, for me at least, because some pieces of my self-awareness, at least with the borderline stuff, it's like, yeah, I'm self-aware that I'm fucking spinning out and I want to fucking stop and like I'm doing this fucking bullshit again. And it's pushing people away and I fucking can't stop myself. And I want someone to understand that it's just an illness and it's not me. And I don't want to be seen like that because that's not me. That's a sickness that like just consumes me and relationships and all the fucking bullshit that I've been dealing with for a very long time. And there's aspects that I've worked on and they've gotten better. And I, some things I was able to work through very quickly. Like, I don't know, like some just thought processes where I just had moments where I was like, why do I care? I don't care. And it just stopped. So I don't know why some things are that easy and then other things are fucking impossible. Like, regulating my emotions? Fucking impossible. I don't... <laughs> this is no matter how hard I try, it is like a fucking car accident. That... It, you just see it coming, but you can't stop it. You've lost control of the fucking car, and all you can do is just look in horror and just... You know, that, that feeling... Anyone who's been in a car accident knows that feeling when you lose control of... Well, anyone who's even lost control of their car and thought they were gonna spin off the road, hit another car. Like, I've been in those situations too where luckily it stops right before it happens, but that is like the exact sort of like fear and panic 
and like just bracing yourself for impact physically and emotionally that I feel when I see myself spinning out. It's like the fucking car wreck that I can't stop. And it's really fucking hard and really devastates my fucking life. And, you know, sometimes it feels like the only way to get out of it is to kill myself. And that's even sadder. Like, I don't... It's hard, especially when you're really deep in that feeling. Like, that's where I've been the last few days. And I'm trying to distract myself. And I'm trying to, like, go to all these support group meetings and everything. But it's... Just the time when I'm alone is the most like just it gnaws at me and I just break down and it hurts a lot so I feel like I've probably spent enough time rambling about this and I probably would be highly repetitive if I kept going on with this video I just figured I needed to say something about it and also, I just generally talk about my life and my mental illness anyway, so there you go. Subscribe if you want. I will keep posting random shit as per usual. Bye.